Framelines went on location for a shoot of Night Owl Theater with Fritz the Night Owl and director Mike McGrainer. A floating corpse welcomes us to Dementia 13. And behold, now the most frightening image of them all, your voice of the night, Fritz the Night Owl. And greetings, good groovers. Earth people, 14 viewers standing safely on the banks. We welcome you into an eerie world of axe murderers, droning, a homicidal maniac, a child killer, and more. So, here's looking at you, Francis. And for you good groovers out there, hope you didn't lose your head during this chapter of Night Owl Theater. We gotta keep meeting like this. Same time, same hat. Night Owl Theater was on the air before I started, and the Night Owl was just a cartoon drawing showing what you, the audience, who were the Night Owls, were supposed to be doing while this movie was on. You were on a date, you were necking on the couch, you were fixing a sandwich, you were getting ready to go to bed. Growing up, my brother and I would watch Fritz at nights, on the weekend nights on Channel 10. We'd either stay with our grandparents or at our parents' house, but we'd sneak down to watch it. Sleeping bags, popcorn, and Fritz. I wrote, narrated, acted in uh, movies, training films for the Army. That was like a doctorate in film TV production. Came back to Columbus, did some part-time work at Channel 10, and the opportunity came up to be a booth announcer at Channel 10, which I took, and then the opportunity to be a movie host. Well, my voice was so well known from radio that when it came time to do the break to lead to the commercial, no one ever said, that I couldn't just ad-lib about the movie. So I started ad-libbing about the movies. People saw the little owl cartoon and they knew my voice from radio. As, uh, so they started writing letters to uh, Fritz the Night Owl and there was no such character at Channel 10. But uh, John Haldy, who was program director and very creative, imaginative guy said, let's create a Fritz the Night Owl character. And after a couple of things, they finally came up with the glasses, which are right off the rack, added these little uh, masonite uh, things and he uh, glued broken mirror on the front because they had a starburst filter on the camera so when the owl's head would move all of these great starburst flashes would go on. Fritz uh, allowed us to start a documentary on him which spawned into this now series. We were trying to match it with the 70s and 80s exactly to keep it the same feel so that it'd be like looking back in time and watching Night Owl Theater now. In the Army, I had learned a lot about uh, special effects, and so I said, when I do the movie, everything I do is going to be related to the movie, and I'm going to use these special effects. No one was using them in television then, other than Ernie Kovacs and Steve Allen. And so that's when I started to incorporate myself into scenes from the movie, just all of the visual effects that I did. And in the course of uh, 17 years of doing it, I won five Emmys. So I must have been doing something right for my on-air performance. When Fritz and I first had a conversation about effects, he would, you know, he, he showed up with pretty much a, a folder of uh, green construction paper and several other things that, like, if we wanted to have Fritz's head floating around, you know, back in the day, he would have to wear construction paper that was pretty much green that would block out anything but his head. And we just kind of looked at that and we're like, well, there's a button for that now. <laughs> it just sort of caught on. It was on uh, seven nights a week. I, and I did it live five nights a week, so I was physically there at three in the morning watching the movie with you, which is another, was another nice thing. I give him the film with just blackouts where the commercials will be, so he knows where we're going to commercial break and he'll make up his notes and then bring those with him to the shoot and then we just shoot the sections, the, the commercial breaks. And plug them in, it's literally a plug and play, like templates that I just drag in timeline one, two, three. And then on Friday night was double chiller. On chiller, we had a big umbrella we did not only monster movies, but science fiction was there. Superheroes we considered as part of Chiller Theater. We showed the psycho, psycho dramas, ghost stories. All of that was what we considered Chiller. It just wasn't a monster or an alien film. Honestly, when we started the series, I started picking from just what I knew of the most popular titles. Oh, Night of the Living Dead, that stuck out to me because everybody knows that movie. And I started with movies that everyone's heard of, made like a list of 36 films, which would be three seasons. The reason more people associate with me with horror is because so many of those people, when they're in fifth grade, sixth grade, it was on Friday night, no school the next day, and that was the night we could stay up late and watch television. 
and that's why we ran the horror movies then. So all of these people would start watching me like in fifth grade, fourth grade, and they would then as they got older, they, they'd watch, say, like Gene Kelly or the Frank Sinatra movie during the week. All of them remember the horror film, I think, because they it was sort of like their passage into being a big kid that they could stay up late at night on Friday and watch uh, Frankenstein and Godzilla and the Blob, etc. I'll never forget the first day we shot for Night of the Living Dead. He nailed the first thing in one take and we were, the whole room, we're just like, it just went silent because it's like, oh, he's back, he's back. Night Owl Theater was on seven nights a week and only one of those nights was horror. Uh, our packages, we had all of the MGM musicals, we had westerns, we had comedies, we had dramas, you name it. We had all those movies. The two most requested people, we, the letters I got, were for Elvis and Godzilla. When we would do an Elvis week, which meant that Monday through Thursday was just an Elvis picture, I mean there were people out there that were ready, ready to elevate me to sainthood and literally get tons of letters. When, when, when can you repeat this, have another Elvis week? Godzilla was the same way. I think now's a nostalgic time. It's been 20 years since Fritz, uh, Fritz's Channel 10 show ended. So I think people are ready to relive their childhood and kind of bring all that back. Well, the new Night Owl Theater is, uh, at the moment, a once a month event. The last Saturday of every month, we run the episode that's going to debut that month. We run it on the big screen and it's free. So there's your invitation. Need all the friendly eyes we can get. We just do it like the old Night Owl Theater. That is, uh, I will come on and introduce the movie using some kind of visual effect that relates to the movie. And you, you may see me, you may, you may just hear me. Just depends on the movie. And it's like what it was like to watch a movie on television in the golden days of television. The fans are interesting because um, they range from like little kids to senior citizens. One a great example of the love that these fans have for Fritz is a father drives him and his son 75 miles every month to see the new episode and he tells his son, you know, this is what I used to watch and that's the way they bond and the son's 14 and the father's like 45 but it's a great uh, Thing, and they always have good, great compliments. And I mean, whole families will come out at midnight and watch this. And we were kind of baffled by it. It's like on the internet now at fritzlives.com. So we kind of like hope to be discovered. As the night owl, I'd like to do some national commercials, you know, voiceovers or as the owl, your voice of the night. The goal of the documentary was I wanted Night Owl Theater to possibly be revived and come back or get more attention. So the documentary we're still shooting, but the priority is just the series is back now, so we have to focus on getting getting the fans attached to that and getting them interested. Then when the documentary comes out, they'll know who the man is, younger and old, and then they'll want to see the story. Now, Superman has to go into a, Clark Kent has to go into a phone booth, a bat, uh, Bruce Wayne has to use the bat cave. This is all I gotta do. Take the glasses, lift up the hat, put them on. Hey, I'm ready to fight evildoers, show bad movies wherever they are.